Uh, we've got lofty ambitions, meanwhile, for a hotel empire. Just over two years ago, Marriott International announced plans to take over Starwood, a deal worth an estimated $14 billion. The merger created what now is the world's largest hotel company, 6,400 properties across the world. Spread out across its 20 brands, Marriott now has locations in 126 countries, and the deal has paid off. Marriott shares are up. 70% plus in the past year alone. Look at that chart. Joining me right now to talk about those successes is Marriott's president and CEO, Arnie Sorensen. Arnie, great to see you. Nice to see you, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on that success. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. We're off to a good start. What's behind it? Well, the, the, uh, the, the deal's a good deal. Uh, and, of course, the market always worries with big deals that it, there will be a stumble in the integration. And I think there was great relief that we haven't stumbled, at least not visibly yet. Uh, and we're off to a good start. But it's a good start in the sense that it is a multi-year process to take Starwood and its SPG platform, pull it into Marriott and the Marriott Rewards platform, really combine it into one loyalty program. That will happen later this year. But so far, it's going really well. How tough is it to combine two very different cultures, right? I mean, uh, Starwood and Marriott, I guess, have similarities in some culture. But overall, people look at these two brands as very different. So have you had issues in terms of melding these two cultures? Well, of course there are always issues that you go through, but the cultures actually are more similar than different. Uh, both very proud companies uh, that want to perform really well for the long term, and they want to win in their space. Uh, and you bring those th two, two things together and, and sort of feed them, uh, and we get a lot of momentum. Uh, obviously, the stock price performed well last year. That's also a great motivating uh, tool for a team of thousands of people around the world who are invested in the company. When do you expect the integration to be complete and in the rear view mirror? I don't think we will be able to say for another couple of years how well it's truly gone. Um, I thought when we did this deal, it would be three to five years sort of minimum. I think we will start to see good performance from our customer share of wallet uh, as the year goes along. So far, it's been great. There have been no stumbles. So, you know, we're, we're really off to a good start. But it's a, it's a big job. I, I guess you had a lot of questions from, um, you know, guests um, and, and, and investors about the rewards program. They want to know what happens with their rewards with the merger. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If, I'm a, if I'm a longtime SPG member who right. spent, you know, 100 nights a year with Starwood and now suddenly Marriott's involved, I had deliberately made a choice and habit. Loyalty, all of those things maybe drove that choice. Now suddenly I've got the earth shifting under me. What's going to happen? Uh, and so far that's been good because we've been reassuring. But until we get that uh, completed, we won't be able to be as definitive. I think they'll be pleased with what's coming, though. Well, what can you tell us about the environment right now? We've been hearing a lot of optimistic talk about 4% economic growth, about this tax plan. From your standpoint, what do bookings look like? Uh, what can you tell us? Well, so let, let me let me step back to the Davos stage for just a second. Uh, and the data is still coming in. The company's doing great. Uh, we're, our organic growth is good. Revpar numbers will report for fourth quarter in a couple of weeks. But you look at global travel trends. We think about a 1.3 billion international trips last year around the world, wow. uh, up about 7% from the year before. The U.S. share was down 4%. Uh, why? Well, the U.S. is a less friendly destination today. Hmm. Uh, and so one of the things we're doing here, uh, why, why are we less friendly? Because we're probably talking about security more than we have in the past. Security is a real issue. Uh, and until people are comfortable that security is being addressed, we would expect there to be some hesitation. But so we're here basically saying, let's work on security on international travel. Let's make sure people understand the power of this industry to create jobs in the United States and around the world. Wow. And let's compete for it. And, and, because business could be even better. And you do, and you open dozens more locations in China in, in, in a joint venture with, with Alibaba. They're not traveling as much to the U.S. Where are they going? They're going everywhere else. Everywhere else? Wow. Everywhere else. Uh, so visitation to Europe were, was up 7%, we think, uh, in 2017. Now, this, this data is a little harder to get reliably because it's not just our data. It's government data and, and global travel trends. But we are seeing growth all around the world. We're seeing Americans come to Europe, too. Uh, the dollar is strong. Uh, the U.K., for example, the pound is quite weak. It's a great place to take a vacation right. these days. Right. Uh, but again, the U.S. is losing some, some share, and we want to see the U.S. address security and come back and take that share because I think it perform even better. All right, we will leave it there. When you come back, we got to talk about the room of the future because I know you've made a lot of changes there. Arnie Sorensen, Marriott.